The U.S. Steel Timber Sports Series Championships is the pinnacle of lumberjack sports in North America. I want to do well and I want to show the raw emotion that makes me love this sport as much as I do. At the end of the day, I'm still a lawyer, but I'll always be a lumberjack. I'm not here to really punch the numbers. I'm just here to do something that I'm good at and really thoroughly enjoy. And win, lose, draw, whatever, we're going to go for it, you know? I am more excited than anyone could possibly be to redeem myself, rip three cuts off, look at the crowd, give them a big. I've been envisioning that just as much as I've been envisioning making the three good cuts. Positive thinking, relaxation, and a good shortcut is what it takes to win these types of races, and um, all or nothing. It's a burning fire inside me to win this. Welcome to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Welcome to the start of the season for the Steel Timber Sports Series 2018. We have assembled the 20 best choppers and sawyers from around the country for regional qualifiers. We split them into two pools of 10. This is Pool A competition today. Tommy Sanders here with Kevin Holtz. And I know you look forward to a lot of things today, including a, a maybe a prohibitive favorite, but let's talk about some of the other scenarios. Yeah, well, Matt Coger, obviously, all eyes on him to see if he can get his, I don't know, 50th championship in a row. He's, he's just been a, a, a dominating factor in this sport. But I'm watching Matt Slingerland. He came so close in 2017. It was an unfortunate situation for him in the hot saw that prevented him from being our new champion. He is looking for redemption this year. All right, again, 10 competitors in Pool A. Here's the rules of the game. Six disciplines they will compete in. A discipline winner will receive 10 points and so on. And the top five will advance to the finals. And we're ready for discipline number one. First discipline straight out of the gate, the springboard chop. The competitor is going to start with one pocket about three feet off the ground. They're going to set a board, use that board to spring their way up, cut their second pocket. Now about six feet off the ground, they'll set a second board and then go attack that white pine lathe turn block at the top of the tree. It takes a tremendous amount of time to get to this level. Every athlete that's here this weekend is in the top 20 of the U.S., which it's like having another full-time job for everyone that's here. You, uh, you'll spend your time, you go to do your 9 to 5, and then you'll spend three or four hours a day getting ready to, at this point, if it's training or working on gear, just to get, you know, get yourself prepared to qualify for this event. Uh, it's a tremendous amount of time. I would imagine like everybody else, I train almost every day I can get. I've been doing what I can, I even switch jobs. You, you're, you were talking to physical therapist Matt Slingerland, now you're talking to lumberjack entertainer Matt Slingerland, so uh, I made that switch. I'm working down in Pigeon Forge at the Lumberjack Feud show. Um, figured that why not do chopping as a job? How else are you going to get better at chopping if you don't chop? Well here we go with the top two seeds in the springboard chop. On the right, the man who was close enough last year to touch the trophy couldn't quite close the deal. That's going to be Matt Slingerland going up against a young competitor who hasn't taken many years to become a top-tier guy across all the disciplines, Walt Page. Well, he came out of Cal Poly running, and this is one of the disciplines that he just embraced. Walt Page is just a great body style, great mental preparation and just settles in so nicely in this event. Both these guys neck and neck on that first board. A little bit of trouble here though for Matt Slingerland. He's going in and driving a couple extra hits in there to get that board set. Look at this, Walt Page is gonna be one, two, maybe three blows ahead of Matt Slingerland. You cannot give up that much ground to Walt Page. Time to beat 50.81 by Adam Lethko. They're on track to do that at this point for sure. You see Matt Slingerland desperately trying to reel in Walt Page and doing a good job of it. He's got a great front worked into that block. He has got all of the near wood cut out of that pine timber. He, that's going to set him up so when he goes to drive this block, it'll twist on him and open it up. He's about one. Whoa! Walt Page, though, reels him in at the end. Great cut from Walt Page. Walt Page just consistently marched his way along. Clean pockets, clean chop at the top, whereas Matt Slingerland had his highs and lows. It was Walt Page's consistency that paid off. 
Well, let's hear from the winner of the first of our six disciplines, standing by with Dave Jewett. Hey, Kevin and Tommy, I've got uh, Walt Page with me right now. He's just Mr. Consistent in this event, seem to find a new gear when the big points are on the line. Uh, absolutely, and uh, you know, we all kind of get tuned in a little bit for this, for this event, and uh, you know, this is the ultimate goal, is to uh, be able to come away with a win here, so uh, absolutely. We're all looking for that. Let's talk about competition awareness. Granted, Slingerland's 50 feet behind you. Do you hear him? Do you know he swings just as hard on his backside and you've got to go? Uh, you know, no, I, I, I'm just thinking about my block, Dave, and, and, and I think we're all like that. Um, I knew that Adam had put up a good clean run. He had a good quick time. So really, all I can do is cut mine the, the best that I can and see where everything comes out. So Walt Page picking up top points, 10 points in the springboard chop with that 49-6-7. You can see behind him Slingerland, Lefko, Koger, and Will Roberts in the top five. We'll take a look at the Harley Davidson overall standings. We'll see basically the same list in the same order, and that's the points right there. But we have five more disciplines left to go today. Next up is the stock saw. Time for test of nerves. This is the stock saw event. It is a 40 centimeter block. Two competitors going at once using identical steel MS 661s. Two complete, this is what we are looking for within a four inch line. On go, retrieve the saw. That is the hand-eye coordination. Then you are listening to the RPMs. That is where the ear-hand coordination comes in and a test of nerves. Do not cut over that four inch line. You will be disqualified. Do not have an incomplete disc. You are disqualified. So step on the stage with thick skin because we need two thin discs for big overall points. Let's see how we got our time to beat in the first heat of the stock saw. Will Roberts would take on Matt Slingerland. And it would be Slingerland setting the pace. Let's we'll see first this heat of the stock saw. That's Trevor Beaudry right there from Walpole, New Hampshire. Product of the uh, college program for sure, as is this man right here, Adam LaSalle from Montana. Adam LaSalle came to fame as a single Sawyer. He's been doing uh, exceptionally well in that field. He's been kind of hit and miss with a back injury over the past couple of years. But I was talking to him backstage, and he's really uh, turned a corner in that recovery. And he's just getting back into it, kind of jumping back in with both feet. This will be a time for him to pick up some serious Harley Davidson points. Oh, Adam LaSalle really got ahead of Trevor Beaudry on that start. Clean, consistent cut. Tommy, that's what we talked about. Hundreds of a second. Everything you can get on your opponent at the start of the run, everything you can make up on the switch, those are the hundreds of a second that come out to wins versus mid-pack finishes. Look at that. It's Adam LaSalle with the top time, 10.08. The thing to notice is how tight all the top three times are. Yeah, I felt discouraged after my springboard, and you know, I just had a good stock saw cut, so I feel good about that. Points after stock saw in pool A. There you go, our Harley Davidson overall points with Matt Slingerland out in the lead. Walt Page, Adam Lethko, Matt Coger right behind. Four more disciplines left to go in these U.S. Championships Pool A competition, and only the top five of these competitors will advance. We'll continue when we come back. Steel Timber Sports on ABC is brought to you by Duluth Trading, tough and genius workwear designed and tested by tradesmen. John Deere, nothing runs like a deer. And Harley Davidson. Wonderful summer day here on the shores of Lake Michigan. We're in Milwaukee, Wisconsin for the Steel Timber Sports Series 2018 U.S. Championships. We've completed two disciplines so far. The springboard chop and the stock saw. Now we're ready for discipline number three, the standing block. Standing block is a vertically fixed piece of white pine wood that has been turned on a lathe to get the diameters exact. The competitor is going to cut halfway through the front side of the log turn and finish with driving blows on the back. 
The first tee to the standing block, Adam Lethko would take on Adam LaSalle. And it would be Lethko besting LaSalle and setting the time to beat it 19 3 8. But that top time wouldn't last long as Matt Slingerland stepped in to face Ben Nicely. Slingerland would best Nicely and set the time to beat at 17.45. So here we go. Will it be decided by the two top seeds in the standing block? On the left, it's going to be defending champion Matthew Koger going up against Walt Page. Well, nobody can discredit Matt Koger. Obviously, he's got a, a resume that extends for the past several years in championships and whatnot. But I really like watching Walt Page cut a standing block. It's the same sort of swing that transitions over from the springboard. In this case, though, I don't know if he's got enough to take down our five-time U.S. champion. Very clean cut for both these guys. Just a small advantage to Matt Koger. Walt Page is going to have to reel it. No, oh, he Koger. can't do it. Easily surpassing the time to beat, and it will be Matthew Koger taking top points. There are your results. Koger and Page at the top of the heap right there. 14.02 for Matthew Koger. Harley Davidson overall points. Shows us with Matt Slingerland still on top, although tied with Walt Page. Matthew Koger back, tied with Adam Lethko with 22 points. Halfway through our Pool A competition here, and coming up next, an event nicknamed the Misery Whip. Here's Dave Jewett to tell you more in our Duluth Trading Discipline Review. Time for the definition of explosiveness. This is the single buck. A 46 centimeter white pine log that must be severed by an old school, now modern day racing saw, six to six and a half feet long. On go, the competitor will run that whole saw, exploding out of the gates, using all the teeth on the saw. So the ingredients we need, physicality, mental preparation, and sprinkle in a $2,000 peg and raker, and you will win the single buck. In the first tee to the single buck, Richard Jordan would take on Will Roberts, and it would be Roberts setting the time to beat at 11.02. Well, this is kind of a rematch. We saw these guys square off in the stock saw. Yeah, you know, within the past couple of years, I probably would say advantage Adam LaSalle, but Trevor Beaudry has been coming on very strong. Trevor Beaudry's a smart guy. He is a, a technical operator in every discipline, and he's applying that to the single buck as well. Great run. Look at Adam LaSalle, though, motoring down through the bottom wow. of this block. What? Whoa. All right, so uh, technical <laughs> difficulties on stand number one. Trevor Beaudry, his handle just broke off his saw. Let's go back and take a look here. Trevor Beaudry on stand number one gets down through the middle of this log, gets down into the small wood, as we say, and this is where trouble can happen, and it did. So he hangs up at the bottom of the log. He goes to sort of twist or wrench the saw up out of that jam, and the handle just breaks free. The weld fails on it. Unfortunate for Trevor Beaudry. I will say, though, in Adam LaSalle's defense, I think he had him beaten before that unfortunate incident took place. Yeah, Adam had him uh, fairly handily, but you know what? We've got to start talking about some Ram overall points here, and, and this is where you just can't give up those, those points. Absolutely. One more heat left to go. Our top two seeds, Matt Slingerland and Matthew Coker. Now two of the big boys chasing that 10.95 on stand number one. Matthew Slingerland, and on stand number two, Matt Coger. Oh, two guys coming out of multi-generational chopping and sawing families. They've, they've traveled the countryside together as, as kids and now as grown adults. We're looking at our, our two all-around top best competitors, uh, both in contention to be our champion this year. 10.95 by Adam LaSalle is the time to beat. Very clean run, just motoring down through. Look, there's a great shot there of Matt Koger, our buddy Dave Jewett down there co-hosting with us, always says you want to see equal piles of chips on both sides of the log. And it sounds like such a simple thing, but so many guys push, 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 and they're only cutting heavily in one direction. A few ups and downs for Matt Slingerland on this one. And he just doesn't look comfortable. Something's not right with, with him, with the saw. Uh, he just doesn't look like he's settled in and, and pulling his style of cut. On the other hand, we had Matthew Koger, a very, very smooth run on his part. He won the heat, but did not take the top points. That's still going to be Adam LaSalle with a 10.95, our Harley Davidson overall points, though. Matt Koger, with that second place finish, takes over the lead in overall points. 
Saw's down, we pick up the axes when we return. The underhand remains along with the hot saw at the U.S. Championships of the Steel Timber Sports Series. Welcome back to Milwaukee for the Steel Timber Sports U.S. Championship. We're down to our final two disciplines in Pool A, and only the top five move on to the championship round. Right now, Will Roberts and Adam LaSalle are fighting for that last spot, while Lethko, Slingerland, Page, and Koger sit in positions one through four as we head into our fifth discipline, the underhand chop. The underhand chop originated from severing large, long logs into shorter segments to get them out of the woods. Our athletes are going to chop halfway through a lathe turned piece of white pine, turn, finishing the block from the backside. Let's see how we got our time to beat. The first tee, it would be Richard Jordan taking on Walt Page, and it would be Page setting the pace at 20 53. Tyler White and Adam Lefko would square off next. Watching Adam Lefko just disassemble this block. There it is! He had it done, he knew it, he avoided that extra swing, gave it a little left foot shove. But neither would be able to best Walt Page's top time. Next, Will Roberts and Ben Nicely. And it would be Nicely taking down Roberts, besting Walt Page's top time with a 19-0-5. Ben Nicely with a really clean technical cut. Here we go with the final heat in the underhand, the two top seeds, Matt Slingerland going up against Matthew Coger. Well, here's a match that's played out across the country, backyards, big shows, small shows, Matt versus Matt. These guys were in a points race last year, and they are uh, gonna try to settle it here in the underhand. What a great technical cut from both these cutters, but it's Matt Coger that seems to be running away. Look at the monstrous pile of huge slabs. Wow. Of Coger is through. I always love to see a pile of big chips. That really shows that the hits are going where they need to go. The axe is, is shifting wood and massive shingles just spilling out of this underhand chop for Matt Coger. The pick up here on the front side of this log for his driving blows into the back. Just a small hang up there on his opening hit. Just a fraction of a second that he lost there. In the grand scheme of things, it didn't hurt him at all. Clean in, clean out. That was a great matchup between Axeman, Axe, and Block. Underhand record, but it was good enough wood to do that with. I didn't realize it was going to be that good. It was just the texture of the wood when I was putting the holes in. It just didn't seem real you know, crispy, but put the hits in, and it happened. So, hey, it's good. Hot yeah. sauce. There's your Harley-Davidson overall points, and your defending champ on top, leading the way for whoever the top five will be. We head into the hot saw. The hot saw is the top fuel dragster of timber sports. These are machines that were never intended to be chainsaws. They are former snowmobiles, personal watercrafts, dirt bikes, modified with guide bars and chains. They weigh about 60 pounds and they put out about 60 horsepower. Well, let's take a look, see how we got our top time to beat. In our first heat of the hot saw, it would be Ben Nicely taking on Walt Page. And it would be Page setting the time to beat at just over seven seconds. And with that win, Page grabs one of the five spots in the championship. Two Lumberjacks will be making their way to the finals. Matt Coger and Matt Slingerland faced off next. This is the discipline that cost Matt Slingerland a new truck last year. Matt Slingerland bringing the fury on stand number two. It would be Matt Coger taking the win Besting Walt Page's time with a cut just under six seconds. That's Tyler White, the competitor from Swampscott, Massachusetts. Be going up against Adam LaSalle. Adam LaSalle, who had a rough start to his day today, the competitor from Montana, where he really needs three complete discs right here. He needs a cut, he needs a time on the board if he wants to hope to stay in fifth place and make it to the finals. Yeah, fifth, obviously, that bubble position. He is just inside the bubble right now to make it onto the finals, but there's a lot of guys 
that uh, really want to be in his seat right now. And this is not the event you want to rely on. There are too many variables. There are too many factors. You just don't want to hedge your bets. There's very few people in the history of Steel Timber Sports that I would say can rely on a hot saw run. I wouldn't want to be one of them. I know Adam LaSalle doesn't want to be one of them. Both these guys clean to the wood. It's going to be advantage in LaSalle at the beginning. Oh, a oh, trouble on both stand one and stand two. Tyler White with difficulty in the second cut. Adam LaSalle difficulty in the third cut. I'm not sure what all went on with Adam LaSalle. Hands in the air. He's not sure what went on. Oh, that is, uh, that's not going to buff out. The carburetor, looks like the, the intake manifold may have cracked. The carburetor came off. I'm not sure what went on. But his, uh, his carburetor looks like it's hanging on by a fuel line. Let's go back and watch this run from Adam LaSalle. Carburetor's still attached at this point. Still okay. I, I can't tell when or why. It just... Right there, middle off. of the cut, it just vibrates loose. Once wow. again, we're talking about machines and parts and tooling that are, are all custom. If there's more two-part epoxy and, and metal <laughs> weld and whatever holding these things together than anything, and it looks like the welds on that uh, intake manifold just gave up. Tyler White's official time, there was a 19.03 for the DQ for Adam LaSalle, which may have. Not done yet. May have opened the door for Trevor Beaudry to land in fifth place. Here we go, final heat of the hot saw. And Adam Lethko, unlike Adam LaSalle, he had a strong start to his day, but he's had some troubles in between as we make it to the final discipline of the day. So the competitor from Maryville, Tennessee, gonna have to get a good cut here, make a good effort if he wants to be in that final five who move on to the finals. Adam Lethgo going up against Richard Jordan. Richard Jordan, the veteran, kind of a specialist in this event. What would you say? Yeah, you know, it's a great matchup between these two guys. We talked about how Lethgo had a great start to the day. And in my mind, I still associate Lethgo with the chopping disciplines. And when I think of Richard Jordan, I associate him with the power sawing disciplines, the stock saw and the hot saw. You know, Tommy, one of the things about Richard Jordan is he's usually come up short in the equipment department. He hasn't had a really hot, hot saw in some of his appearances in the Steel Timber Sports Series, and I think he's rectified that here today. Richard Jordan, a big first cut, but he is motoring down through that log, but it's gonna be Let's Go. Let's Go must have heard me talking about how we I associate Richard Jordan with power sawing and Lethgo with chopping. He said, you know what? I'll show you. Adam Lethgo put up a great cut. Look to be complete uh, points, getting efforts from both of our final two competitors in the hot saw. Let's look at this run from Adam Lethgo. He is up into the block, just a little bit wide on this first cut, but not bad at all. He's got the plumb bob out, nice straight cut. Sets him up with plenty of timber for the next two runs. Very clean. Starting to run out of material here, but he gets it in right down the side of the purple line. Nice run for Adam Lethgo. Well, here's our final story as far as official times go. Those two great times by Adam Lethgo and a 6.09. Richard Jordan, 6.65. It shook things up considerably. And here are your final Harley Davidson overall points. Matthew Coger, a landslide for him in first place. Wall Page second, right behind him. Adam Lethgo. A lot of that, a part of that great hot saw performance. Matt Slingerland, though he DQ'd, managed to hang in there for fourth place. And look at that, Adam LaSalle, by one point over Trevor Beaudry, hangs in there with a 27. So it's going to be Coger, Page, Lethko, Slingerland, LaSalle, making it to the finals. Well, the finalists from Pool A are set. And coming up next, the quest to punch the five final tickets to the championship begins.
Welcome back to Milwaukee, the semifinals of the 2018 Steel Timber Sports Series Pool A competition. We've taken it down from 10 competitors to five. Koger, Page, Lethko, Slingerland, and LaSalle headed to the finals. We're ready now for Pool B action. Those are your 10 competitors. And identify the, the big favorites for us, Kevin. Well, one of the biggest favorites every year is Arden Koger Jr. Three decades in the Steel Timber Sports Series. And I think he could have a shot at, at moving on and taking a championship. The two guys I'm really watching though, Jason Lentz, another multi-generational chopper, and Cassidy Shear. Cassidy's just run amok in this series in the past two years, and I think he's gonna scoop up a ton of Harley Davidson points. Our 10 competitors will go through the full schedule of six different disciplines, and only the top five in Pool B will advance to the finals, and we're ready to go with discipline number one, the springboard chop. Let's see it now, this heat of the springboard chop. It's gonna be David Green. West Coast guy from Oregon going up against the veteran Arden Coger Jr. of West Virginia. Arden Coger Jr. right there on the start. David Green has battled injuries in the past. It's good to see him back with us. We watched him rise through the college ranks. He's got his work cut out for him though. Arden Coger Jr. has cut more springboards <laughs> by a by a hundredfold margin probably over David Green. So David's really gonna have to put in a good clean technical cut. Arden there with a big upslope on his second board and it's listing towards his heels as he uh, settles some weight into it. That board is gonna calm down a bit. Over the half a minute mark now. These competitors really just getting started on that block. It's a great angle to see David Green's cut. You see him open one and one. Clears out the center round face of that wood. That leaves some points or some corners. So he can go into a two and two pattern. Arden Coger Jr. came in low on that front face. It's gonna put him in an awkward position as he goes to cut off this back. Past the one minute mark now. Yeah, you can see how, there it is for Arden Coger Jr. You see how low he had to come in on the backside. Wow, David Green though, right on his heels. Arden Coger Jr. had to come in really low on the backside of that block. There's a great shot of here as he goes to finish this log off. Because that front face was kind of turned and down low, he was very lucky to have enough uh, oomph behind that ax to find those last fibers. That's a lot of wood to slice off on your off-handed face, standing on a piece of scaffolding, basically. Cassidy Shear certainly showed us something last year, 2017, that he is certainly a game competitor. Good all-arounder as well, going up against another West Coast guy, and this one, David Moses from Washington State. Well, and Cassidy Shear came in last year and voiced his concern in the competitors' meeting because he was ranked at the bottom of the heap in every discipline. And they kind of said, well, welcome to the club. <laughs> you know, the new guy club. Well, he went out and just put on a clinic in nearly, or maybe even in every discipline, and his rankings have changed significantly for 2018. Well, he's chopping in this event as one of the top two seeds, himself and Moses. Now, Cassidy's an exceptional all-around athlete. He's got balance, he's got the, the composure to, uh, to come out here and do well, and even some of his conventions in his, in his swing are different than what we see from other competitors, but he makes it work, and he does it exceptionally well. David Moses, so there's a great story from our West Coast qualifier. He has rallied back over the past several years after a really devastating Achilles injury. Caused a, a whole bunch of other problems to kind of cascade down the line. It's great to see David back on a springboard and cutting very well. Didn't have enough to take down Cassidy Shear right now. But a clean cut from both of these guys. Cassidy Shear will take top points in our first discipline, followed by David Moses and Arden Coger Jr. As we get ready for our next discipline, the stock saw. These guys are gonna make two cuts, one down, one up, in four inches of wood, and this event will be won or lost by hundreds, if not thousands, of a second. This heat a matchup between Matthew Bolton of Canandaigua, New York, going up against big Jason Lentz of West Virginia. It's been great to watch Jason Lentz transform in this stock saw event. He spends more time on this stage, spends more time training this, and the mental aspect comes around a really tight race. Wow, an mm. exceptionally tight race between Jason Lentz and Matt Bolton. Let's have another look at these guys side by side. That's Lentz on the left, Bolton on the right. As they come up through this second cut, 
This is a little tiny bobble there by Bolton. He gets in towards the middle of the wood, but it looks like it's going to be Bolton in the end. A little bobble may have been a little extra hoss power as he was uh, working his way up through that second cut. Matt Bolton's time of 10.87 takes the top spot. Jason Lentz right behind him with 10.96. These two were matched up in the springboard shop, so this is going to be David Moses once again. The competitor from Snoqualmie, Washington, going up against the Wisconsin native, Cassidy Shear. See the different styles of these guys going at it here. David Moses gets up over the log, nose the bar down. Cassidy Shear has got his feet part flat through the wood, and in this case, it's advantage sheer. Apparently gonna make it rain. Yeah, so he does. One of the things that can be a big help in this stock saw event is having a solid platform, keeping your body fixed, focusing on the, uh, the saw through the block. Look at this first cut from Cassidy Shear. You can't get much more consistent than that. Nice, clean, thin cut. He has got a ton of timber to work with. You probably got three, four, maybe five cuts in there, Tommy. Well, there you go, Matthew Bolton, his 10.87. is gonna hold up strong. He's the number one points getter in the Stock Saw competition. Jason Lentz, Cassidy Shear, Josh Wilson, and Matthew Marks, top five positions in Stock Saw. Harley Davidson overall points. It's gonna be Cassidy Shear with 18 ahead of Bolton, Lentz, Coger, David Moses, remember, only the top five make it to the finals and more to come. Chopping and sawing from Milwaukee on the Steel Timber Sports Series. Welcome back to Milwaukee, Wisconsin for the 2018 Steel Timber Sports Series. 10 athletes are competing for the five championship spots and Shear will remain in the top spot at overall points, followed by Bolton, Lentz, and Arden Coger Jr. Only the top five again will advance to the finals. We are ready to go with our third discipline, the standing block shot. Let's look at how we got our time to beat in the first heat. It would be David Green taking on Josh Wilson and that's Green setting our time to beat. This heat of the standing block chop. How about two big competitors from the mid-Atlantic region? Jason Lentz going up against Zach Browse. Both of these guys, Kevin, looked like they could play a tight end in the NFL, no problem. Yeah, instead they, they took a higher ground. They went this timber sports there route. You go. Lentz, obviously a name synonymous with the sport. And if you're saying, who's Zach Browse? Well, you probably haven't seen him around the Timber Sports Series much, but if you've traveled to any competitions around the Mid-Atlantic region, region, you know who Zach Browse is. He's become an, an exceptional cutter, training with guys like Arden Goldberg Jr. and, of course, Jason Lentz as well. And look at the thundering blows that Zach wow. Browse is going to put down one blow behind Jason Lentz. Jason steps in that cut just a little bit, ends up pinching that second-to-last drive hit Normally we like to see that block kind of open up and twist when you take that near drive in that downward direction. It didn't open up, it didn't show him any daylight, but Jason's got enough muscle to uh, drive the far side of that log off regardless. Time to beat 17-22 and one more heat left in the standing block. It's gonna be Arden Coger Jr. going up against Cassidy Shear. It's an interesting dynamic here. We've got a competitor who's been around for three decades. His competitor identification number, number eight. All right. Cassidy Shear, his competitor identification number, 414. So, so you get a good sense of who's been around a little bit longer in terms of the sport. But then it hasn't stopped Cassidy Shear. He really came in last year with a, I don't want to say an ax to grind, but he had something to well, prove. Well, there you go. And uh, he's done it very well. Arden Coger Jr. right there with the go. Watch the swing speed from Arden. As he gets around to the back side of this block, we'll have a great look here. Right down the barrel, he goes into a, well, he goes into a bit of an odd pattern there as he's looking to save one extra hit. It does not pay out though. Cassidy Shear puts in the clean, safe cut and best the 30-year veteran of the Steel Timber Sports Series. 
Let's have a look at the second side here for Cassidy Sheer. He opens one and one, draws a nice chip out, reaches to the far, then the near. He's going after those corners. That's where those chips just fly out. That hit didn't go quite as well as planned, but he had a ton of work done on the front, and the top of that block just falls apart. Big victory for Cassidy Shear. Anytime you can take down Arden Coger Jr. in the standing block, his time is going to be good enough to take top points yet again. 10 points to Cassidy Shear in the standing block. Shear will remain in the top spot in overall points, followed by Bolton, Lentz, Green, and Arden Coger Jr. In the top five again will advance to the finals. And these saws have just evolved over the past decade from M2 tooth patterns to peg and raker saws. They are over six feet long. They tip the price tags of around $1,400 right now. In the first tee of our single bucket would be David Green taking on Matt Bolton. And it would be Green setting our time to beat at 12.48. Two competitors getting ready to go at it in the single buck saw. It's going to be Matthew Marks from Canandaigua, New York, going up against the Mid-Atlantic region's Zach Browse. Again, a couple of big guys pushing and pulling that saw. Both these guys with good clean cuts. They're down through the middle part of the block. This is where things can get hairy, though. It's in the bottom of the log. Wow, Zach Browse just drives through the bottom of that log. He actually broke the bottom of the disc. Let's have a look here at the run from Zach Browse. Getting a little bit of help and coaching from Adam LaSalle. He gets down to this last push stroke. You can see there the bit of wood that broke off. Uh, the handle kind of hit, snapped the top of the cookie. That is a complete cut. He did cut all of the wood fibers, even though it fell off in two pieces. Here we go with our final matchup, the top two seeds in the single buck competition. It'll be Jason Lynch, who's been competing at this level for half a dozen years, and as you know, 30 years plus for his competitor on the other side over there, Arden Coger Jr. The growth, though, we've seen out of Jason Lentz, a lot of it, I mean, part of it's been physical. He's, he's a bigger boy now than he was a few years ago, but so much of it's been mental. It's the technical aspect that he brings to the sport now that he didn't just a few years ago. And I look at things like you watch him count off the teeth. He's making sure that saw is exactly where it needs to be. He's making sure his feet are exactly where they need to be. These guys chase each other all over the United States, going to competitions. They've been training together. Watch the bottom of this log. There it is, Arden Coger Jr. So many times these races are won and lost in the bottom corner of that log. Big energy from Arden Coger Jr. as he takes down the young buck on stand number one. Arden Coger Jr. has been battling back from injury the past couple of years. Still battling back, but just threw it all into that big fist pump from Arden Coger Jr. as he posted time just under that 11 second mark. Still battling back, and he's still got it, ladies and gentlemen, absolutely. Arden Coger Jr., as you can see there, your winner at 10.51. Zachary Browse, David Moses, Jason Lentz, Cassidy Shear, all a good distance behind, but it's still Cassidy Shear on top, and Harley Davidson overall points. Lentz, Coger Jr., Bolton, and David Moses right now well, tied with David Green to round out the top five. We've got two events to settle it in. We'll have it for you when we come back. Steel Timber Sports on ABC is brought to you by Harley Davidson. Duluth Trading, tough, ingenious workwear designed and tested by tradesmen. And Steel, maker of a full line of gas and battery powered outdoor power equipment. Visit steeldealers.com to find your local steel dealer. Welcome back to German Fest in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Time is running out for our 10 athletes battling for the final five championship spots. Right now it's Sheer, Lentz, Arden Coker Jr. sitting in the top three spots while David Green and David Moses down tied for the fifth and final spot as we head into the underhand. This is the underhand shot. We have two groups of competitors. Competitors that hope to win, competitors that expect to win. In this event, you better expect to win. You are standing on a 32-centimeter log. You have to think about scraping the rafters with that axe 
bring it on a collision course, sinking it to the handle, and you need to get halfway through. Then comes the transition. It is a seamless motion from the hit in the front of the log to the hit in the back of the log. It must be done in one second or less, keeping that momentum into the backside, removing the chips. Then your defined physics, driving off as much wood as possible. Once you feel the work is done in the back side of the log, you cannot hope you can drive it off. You have to know you can drive it off for those big overall points. First heat of the underhand chops going to feature this man, Cassidy Shearer, Hartley Davidson, overall points leader, going up against David Green. You know, Tommy, I keep going back in my mind to 2017, and Cassidy Shearer voicing his concern that he was ranked so low in all these disciplines, and now it's 2018, and he's leading the pool in the semifinals. This is just insanity. This just shows the exponential growth that he's putting on. He is a couple blows behind David Green, but wow, look at the penetration on that ax. He is he's just sending that thing right to the maker's mark. Cassidy Shear comes off ahead of David Green. He put the investment in the front of that log and just capitalized on it for the rest of the race. See that opening blow from Cassidy Shear. He gets a ton of penetration out of that hit, but it hangs the heel of the ax, held him up for a fraction of a second. That's the stuff that'll cost you in finals, but he is walking away with this underhand win. Final heat, the top two seeds in the underhand chop. Jason Lentz going up against Arden Coger Jr. The time to beat, 16-8-8 by Cassidy Shear. I was about to say, both these guys have a solid shot at beating that time, but many people in Pool B had a solid shot at beating that time, and nobody was able to pull it off. It was a great cut by Cassidy Shear. Arden Coger Jr., look at the pace he brings. I feel like we talk about it every time he cuts the other end. A bit of a missed hit there, though, on the turn. He got a little wild. He had to go back and pick it up. That cost him a, a solid shot in the back of this log. He's still going to have enough to take down Jason Lentz, but that could have been done a little bit quicker and cleaner in the back. Great job, though. Great time from Arden Coger Jr. That underhand from Arden Coger Jr. is our John Deere Nothing Runs Like a Deer performance. Watch as Arden Coger Jr. wades into the backside of this underhand chop. We're seeing a lot of emotion out of Arden Coger Jr. this weekend. The big fist pumps, the yells that we've seen from the past. He is uh, definitely glad to be back and recovering. You got to keep in mind, he grew up chopping against Jason's dad, against the great Mel Lentz. Now when he's able to take down the sun, you, you got to admit, he earned it. Well, he's in it to win it, that is for sure. Points there in our Harley Davidson overall points. Third place behind Cassidy Shear and Jason Lentz Bolton and David Green round out the top five with one more. The hot sauce left to go. It's going to be Cassidy Shear looking pretty good to advance to the finals based on his performance today. He'll be going up against Josh Wilson. Josh at this point out of the five cuts. So first order of business for Josh Wilson. Get three good cuts and post a time. Nice shot of Cassidy's uh, saw, which he has named Purple Rain. Of course, after uh -huh. his fellow Minnesotan, Prince. Part that's a little bit puzzling, though, on this saw. You may see a little bling at the end of the tailpipe. I believe that's being called the optimizer. Oh, okay. Oh, I see it the, right uh, there. Yeah. yeah that's, that's, by okay. some of the fellow competitors, a little, few pieces of the optimizer fell off. Still we got the on, flash going, though. That's yeah, we're sure. waiting that's on really some, all that matters. Some R&D, uh, some data rolling in on where and how exactly that improved performance. But here we go, Josh Wilson on stand two. Cassidy Shear in Purple Rain on stand number one. It's gonna be Josh Wilson, Cassidy having a little bit of trouble getting that third cut lined up. Has to go back and reshoot. Look to Josh Wilson though. This hot saw event, it's an intimidating event. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. The first time I started a hot saw, let alone made a cut, I mean, it, it gets your heart racing. So for a, a relative uh, up and comer like Josh Wilson to come up on, on a stage like this and lay down three cuts, good for him. Here we go, Matt Bolton going up against Arden Coger Jr. Of course, the big story here, Tommy, on stand number one, my former hot saw. That's Fluffy. Oh, over on stand number one. Didn't recognize. Yeah. <laughs> we watch the blue tape on the saw now. A little trouble though for the vet over on stand number two. A lot of foot movement, a lot of moving around. Something very not right for Arden Coger Jr. Matt Bolton, though, with some big fist pumps. He's happy with that run. 
Gonna be good enough to take over the lead for Matthew Bolton. Look at this cut. Great first cut, keeps his feet planted. Great operation. The saw's running well, but nice job on Matt Bolton. Three clean, consistent discs with plenty of wood to spare. Here we go, Jason Lentz on the right, Zach Grouse on the left. Both these guys switch on the fuel just before go time here. Oh, a bobble on stand number one for Zach Grouse. Got him kind of thrown off balance a little bit. These saws weigh around 60 pounds. That, and then, of course, pushing 60 plus horsepower. That's a lot of push-pull action on the operator. I've had my saw push me back, leaving like cleat marks torn into the stage. And there we go, a yellow flag thrown on Jason Lynch, who might have had the winning time. Officially five and change here. Let's take another look. See a ton of pressure going down. A bit of a, a thick cut on the first one. Not really straight on these cuts. He's good, quick on transitions, but it does look pretty close on the bottom of that log. Remember, the rule is that the line has to be severed. Completely cut through for a DQ. If there's any purple left, they'll be okay. The official results are in, and it's bad news for Jason Lentz. He took a little bit of that purple line, so it's a DQ for Lentz. Matt Marks takes the top time in the hot saw. But our top five from Pool B is set. Shear, Coger Jr., Lentz, Bolton, and David Green. Moving on to the finals, facing off with Matt Coger, Walt Page, Adam Lethko, Matt Slingerland, and Adam LaSalle. Join us next week for the Steel Timber Sports Series Men's U.S. Championship. I'm Tommy Sanders for Kevin Holtz and Dave Jewett. We'll see you next time.